Hey Thinksters, what's up? It's Chris, founder of Thinkster.com and in today's video you're going to learn about the Python Bitwise NOT operator. So um, so this is part of my series about uh, all Python uh, um, operators including the Bitwise operators and I think the Bitwise operator they are kind of beautiful because they teach you a lot of the basic computer science skills that uh, that uh, you probably have forgotten since you since you studied computer science or maybe if you never studied computer science then uh, it makes sense anyways to learn about the basic representation of numbers in um, in your Python shell. Okay, so the bitwise uh, not operator is very simple. So um, say you have a number x, um, let's make it um, 2 and now we can apply the bitwise operator it's this uh, tilde operator and we can um, prefix any number so you could also, also prefix a variable with it like this or you could prefix the number directly with this okay so this is tilde operator and then we have an integer number and uh, this is this performs bitwise not operation internally and um I think I have to do some um, some some explaining later on 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 like conceptual explaining on on a, a whiteboard to actually uh, show you how it works. But just just overall as a rule of thumb, you could already uh, remember that to that basically the this is just a comment now. Bitwise uh, not operator applied to variable x is the same as calculating minus x minus one. Okay, why is that? So I will explain this uh, in a moment why why this is actually the case and 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 how it, it it basically happens. Okay. So, but first of all, maybe some conceptual um, stuff. So now we have a, a whiteboard here and Python. So say you have eight bits um, uh, that can rep represent any number, like an integer number in Python. So for example, you have one 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 zero 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 zero. So these are eight bits, eight positions, and you could set each bit could could be either zero or one okay so you have many different combinations actually and each bit string each eight bit string encodes one integer number right so we so you have like uh, for the first position you have two possibilities for the second position you have two possibilities again so you multiply number of possibilities for the third position you again have two possibilities to to choose a number so you multiply the the space of possible numbers you can encode but um, it's it's an exponent of uh, the base two. So we have uh, if we have um, n, for example, n equals eight uh, positions, uh, then we can encode two to the power of n different integer numbers, right? And the most basic encoding is to use zero 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 as integer zero right so this is a natural natural way of doing it and then if you increase this by one and the remaining bits remain zero then you get the integer one obviously right and so on yeah so this is like this is a natural encoding so you can uh, by increasing the bit and for example now if you have this prefix then this becomes uh, the integer two so that in general uh, we have like if we set the bit at position i and um, then this bit basically encodes the decimal uh, representation two to the power of i. Okay, so so for example, uh, at position zero, this is two to the power of zero. So we have two to the power of zero is one. So we have zero times two to the power of zero. Zero times one is zero. And then we have one times two to the power of um, one because it's at position one. So we have one times two is two. So therefore, this is the decimal uh, number two. And now let's have another example just for. Uh, 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 complete uh, just to have the complete picture so for example say we have this bit string now we have 0 times 2 to the power of 0 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 2 okay you see the exponent increases by 1 for each posi position and now this is basically 2 um, plus 4 so we have 6 okay so this would be the um, encoding of um, the of the decimal number 6 and now you you would proceed doing this if you ultimately reach a point where you have set all four five six seven eight so now we have eight bits right now we have uh, we have um, set all those bits to one right naturally and only the leading bit is zero so therefore this would be the number um, this would basically encode two to the power of 0 plus 2 to the power of 1 plus 
point 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 two to the power of seven is it seven no it is six right because we have like the last position would be would be um uh, two to the power of seven so this one would be two to the power of seven but now if we just would come would uh would um like increase this number by one we would we basically would have to set all those bits to zero and the first bit to one but now we also need to represent negative integers right python this is called signed signed um uh, integers so python need um um needs to basically um signed integers so python needs to also encode somehow the the fact that the some numbers can be negative right because you can have negative integers how would you encode those in this kind of uh, encoding scheme you couldn't actually if you only had these eight bits and you wouldn't do like and you would just proceed with positive numbers here you would encode all numbers from zero to from integer zero to two to the power of um eight Eight, right so because we have two times two times two times two times two this eight times different possibilities to encode a bit um, uh, to, to set a bit so we have um, uh, yeah eight, eight times a factor of two so we have two to the power of eight different combinations and this turns out to be two to the power of six 64 so we have 265 right so we would we would have the range um, from zero to 265 so this would be called an unsigned integer why is that because the first because it is unsigned it doesn't have an um it doesn't have um a six a sign basically so it's n neither positive nor negative and therefore we assume it's positive right because we have no information encoded in in a bit whether the number is positive or negative actually this information whether the number is positive or negative would be would need a one bit a, as well so right so and the entropy we say the entropy of this kind of piece of information it's one piece of information and the minimum number of bits in the computer computing world would be one bit right one bit it's like either true or false is it positive or is it negative so this basically would for each number if you would use one bit like the leading bit to encode this information then we say it's a signed integer right because the first bit now is a sign that tells us whether it's positive or negative but now as the first bit tells us whether the number is positive or negative we can only use the seven remaining bits to encode numbers right so therefore we reduce the space of the positive numbers to be encoded to uh, half by half right so we have uh, instead of going from uh, to 265 we now can only encode 128 which is 2 to the power of 7 different combinations but what we also can do is encode all negative numbers from minus 128 because now if the first bit is set to 1 this means it's a negative number and now we can have like we have 7 bits so we have 7 bits to encode the remaining num negative numbers so we can uh, encode 2 to the power of 7 different uh, negative numbers um, to actually increase our uh, our space of encoded numbers so this one would be um unsigned integers and this one would be signed integers right and you see both like the space is the same we just shifted by by a certain uh, number number of uh, decimal numbers because in in both cases we have uh, uh actually 255 i should say uh, we have 265 different numbers that we encode and here we sh i should say 127 because zero is a number we need to encode as well right so now all, we can encode all numbers from zero to 127 and which is 200 uh, one, uh, 128 different numbers and then we can encode all numbers from minus one to minus 128 which is also 128 numbers so together again in both spaces for unsigned integers or signed integers we have 265 different integers that can be encoded um, using using this uh, scheme right so and therefore so now long story short the first bit sets the um, the the sign or sets the information whether the number is positive or negative and we obtain this by just um, so in and and that's why like, like this is information is basically used in our um, 
not bitwise operate, operator. So therefore, if you have if you apply the bitwise not operator to a positive number, we always obtain a negative number. And I show you I show you why in like more detail next. So um, so here here is a good example. So say we have um, bitwise not on uh, decimal number 32. It gives me the result minus 33. Three. And this is basically, again, this is a formula. So we have uh, minus 32 minus 1 is minus 32. So the formula works. But why, why, is, this, why is this formula working? Now let's have an example uh, and let's have a like dive deeper into the, into the representation of the number. And I have prepared this slide here already. And um, you see like our number x is represented like this using um, like this in this example, 7 bits. In reality, it would be like 8 bits or 16 bits or so. But so, okay, so say we have these 7 bits and all bits are 0, but this bit is set to 1. Why is that? Because we have like uh, 0 times 2 to the power of 0, 0 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, 2 to the power of 5. And 2 to the power of 5 turns out to be to be 32, right? So we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 30, 32. Uh, so we set the bits for, for the 32 bit, basically, and the remaining bits are just 0, because we only need to represent the decimal, uh, decimal number 32 uh, with our number x. And now if we perform the bitwise not operate, operator, it basically flips all bits. It flips the first bit, it flips like uh, the bit 0 becomes the uh, bit 1 and bit 1 becomes bit 0. So it simply flips all bits. So therefore it's called it's a bitwise operate operation. It flips all bits. But now we obtain this number 1011111. And uh, so what does it mean? This is basically called a complementary integer number. And this is exactly what I've explained to you in this uh, example. So we now use the first bit as a sign whether it's a positive or a negative number. So now this is a negative number. You can already see the first bit encodes the fact that it is a negative number. But now we simply need to get this negative numbers. How, we do, how do we accomplish this? Basically, it's a simple strategy. You can just remember it or not. It is not so important. You basically flip all bits back to, you flip all bits back, you get the corresponding decimal number, which you already had 32. You increase it by 1 to 32, 33, and then you prefix with the negative symbol. So we, you add the minus symbol to it because the first bit is set and you obtain the number 33. So this is just a strategy. This is just an encoding scheme. And it works basically um, to uh, because, bec like, yeah, it's just, I mean, just per convention, this is how, how it is used. So this means that if you had all bits set to one, you would, you would invert those bits you would get this the bit stre uh, stream 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. You would increase it by 1 to 1. So you have uh, the decimal number 1 and you prefix with the negative symbol. So you have minus 1. So therefore, the if you have a lot of 1s, you basically have um, the number minus 1, which is the smallest number from your negative space. Remember, uh, the, the positive space here, the positive half, remain, uh, starts with the number 0. So therefore, the first negative number is the number um, minus 1. So therefore, the bit string uh, stream 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, this represents the number minus 1. Okay. And now we can, we can, so if we have, if we flip one bit here, then we would obtain basically um, the number minus 2, right? So, um, and if we again flip one bit, so like this, for example, we would obtain the number minus three. So this is just like this is this is how it, how Python encodes the negative numbers, right? And if you would proceed with this strategy, you would finally obtain one zero zero. So all bits would be zero, and um, this one would now encode the number minus one hundred twenty eight. Okay, so as uh, as discussed in our um, in the previous figure. Okay, so this is just the, basically how all negative numbers are encoded and you can use this encoding table, you can do it in, in your head or you can use the strategy that I've just shown, shown to you um, that basically uses, um, uses this simple formula to, to um, convert it to a positive number by flipping all bits, increase it by one and add the minus symbol in front of it to actually come from an, from a, from a negative bit number from a complementary binary number to the decimal number to the negative decimal number okay so now 
I think the remaining stuff we, we will discuss will be uh, pretty simple now, given that we have done some theory and have understood the concepts first. So, um, for example, if you have now um, bitwise inversion of uh, zero, it would be would result in minus one. If you have bitwise not on uh, the decimal number one, what, what would be the result? You can pause the video, think of this about this. Yeah, it is reduced by one, right? So it is just, I mean, uh, if you have minus two, it is three. If you have minus three, what is the, uh, or not three. So what is the result of this? Minus four and so on. Okay, so it's uh, pretty simple now. And if you have, say, 128, then the result would be minus 129, right? So it always, uh, basically, it always applies this formula here, which I've shown you previously. So it uh, performs minus x minus 1 to get the number. You can also apply it on negative numbers. Now it becomes a bit of brain teaser, right? So we have not bitwise not on minus 5. And this now becomes a positive number. Again, because we flip all bits. Uh, so we have bitwise not operation, which means we flip, flip all bits. So therefore, we obtain, if we start with the negative numbers, we have the first, we have a signed integer, the first uh, so the first bit is set to one. Now we flip everything. So the, now, now the first bit is set to zero, which means that we now encode a positive number. Um, no matter what is, what are the remaining bits, we already know it's a positive number. So therefore, uh, we basically invert this operation, right? So, and we can set, if we set the negative number as X now, we basically obtain minus, minus X minus one. Okay, so we have plus X minus one. So therefore, if you have minus five, we just use five and calculate minus one, which is four, and to obtain our decimal number. So this is how this is how it works on basic examples. Okay, now what if you want to define your own data type and overload and basically def allow a bitwise not operation operator on your own data type? Now you can use Dunder methods to accomplish this. So say we have class data, we set in it. So this is a constructor and set it to data and now we want to do the following so we want to create a um, variable x of type data and we pass three into it so this is our integer data item so now our our uh, so if we call x dot data we obtain the value three the integer value three and now you, we want to perform bitwise not on our custom data type and print the result to the shell and what we would expect, basically, we, resume, we print the result data to the shell. And what we would expect is the value minus 4, right? Because we start with 3, we, we calculate minus 3, minus 1, which is minus 4. So this should be the result of our operation. But of course, if I run this now, we get a type error. And it tells me bad operand type for unary um, bitwise not operator data. So it doesn't work because it really doesn't know how to how to bitwise invert my custom data type because I have not shown him how to do this right so how can we accomplish this we simply define the dunder method um, called invert and this is one of one of many dunder methods that can customize the behavior of your own classes and which you should know how to how to actually use them as a general idea and then use it on different so learn how to think in terms of dunder methods and how to customize your own uh, methods and you can now return something what do we return we return a new data instance and you pass self.data this is the original uh, data point now we wouldn't actually change anything we want to invert this integer number so we simply uh, add the bitwise not operator in front of it and now this should work so now it works it runs without without error it simply gives me the result minus four which is exactly what we expected okay so this is how you can customize the behavior of your own custom classes by um, overriding the invert so done the invert method okay so i think that's enough for today you have learned a lot thanks for watching the video and see you in the next video bye